I take it that wasn't for me. Is that, that's a, Listen, I uh, am very pleased to, to be here. And let me just do a shout out to Vice President Joe Biden. He's going to be here in just a minute. Where's the. Uh... You know, he represented as a U.S. Senator for so many distinguished years the state of Delaware, but he was born in Pennsylvania. He's a native son, so when he comes on, I want you to give him a, a warm Pennsylvania welcome back home. So. Um, and then you're also going to hear from a few other people here. But let me just say, I am really proud to be part of this you know, it's, it's, it's On Us campaign. This is the week of action. And Pennsylvania, as the Undersecretary said, uh, was the first state to adopt this and to participate in this. Uh, this initiative has three goals. You'll be hearing, I know you've already heard about this, but the first thing is to improve awareness, prevention, and reporting and response systems in the Commonwealth. The second thing, is to remove or at least reduce barriers that prevent survivors from reporting sexual assault. And third, to demonstrate that we are all committed at every level in Pennsylvania to the task of eradicating this scourge from every part of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you. <clears throat> Now, this campaign is really, really important. We need to treat sexual assault in our schools and colleges as the serious problem it truly is. We need to agree that we are not going to put up with this any longer. That's because sexual assault has a corrosive effect on all of us. It obviously affects its survivors. It affects the friends, colleagues, and family members of the survivor. It affects all of us, and it happens a lot. Sexual violence is unfortunately pervasive in our society. It affects an estimated one in five college women. Nearly 20% of young women between the ages of 14 and 17 are sexually assaulted, mostly by someone the survivor knows and trusts, a classmate, a supposed friend, a relative, or even a family member. And the impact is serious and widespread. First of all, sexual assault, wherever it occurs, clearly imposes a huge burden on its survivors, obviously. The individual consequences are clear. Survivors are more likely to experience immediate as well as long-term health consequences. Issues like post-traumatic traumatic stress syndrome, 94%, 75% suffer from depression, 35 to 50% have suicidal tendencies. Survivors are more likely than their peers to abuse alcohol. They are more likely to drop out of school. They are more likely to have a lower GPA in college, all of which leads to an average reduction in lifetime income of over $240,000. That is $15.1 billion cost for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania over the lives of these survivors. So there are clear costs to the survivors of sexual assault, but there are also clear costs to those living and studying around them. When someone else is sexually assaulted, it reflects and often reinforces a number of negative forces. It promotes a culture of unfairness and discrimination. It feeds on the pernicious idea that some people have clearer rights than others, that some are more equal than others. It builds an environment of fear among the community of friends, acquaintances, and neighbors who know of the survivor's ordeal. And this inhibits and it restricts freedom of action on the part of the entire community. Sexual assault places a barrier between people who have become concerned about the possibility of sexual assault and those with whom they might otherwise interact freely. It dampens the open exchange of everything from ideas to feelings. Finally, sexual assault reduces the quality of life for all of us. Safety is a fundamental civil right, and sexual assault is a clear violation of that civil right. And when that violation occurs for any member, for any member of the community, it occurs for every member of the community. It violates the right of everyone to a safe society. A society in which se sexual assault is a big problem is a society in which the core values we claim to hold dear, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are nothing more than empty words. We need to end sexual assault. To this end, I've directed my administration here in Pennsylvania to address this problem over the course of the next year. 
We have great partners in this effort. We're in one right now. Over 200 colleges, universities, and school districts in Pennsylvania have signed the pledge right now to join the It's, it's Up to Us campaign. That's a great thing. Since January, over 400 people have taken the pledge in Pennsylvania, and the hope is that many more, many more, will continue to join us. We also have a network of 50 rape crisis centers across the state ready and willing to work with our schools, colleges, and universities. I am determined to make Pennsylvania a shining example to the rest of the world as to what committed citizens can do to make our world better. It's truly on us to accomplish this. Let's keep working. Thank you very much. Now, now, I know the great greeting you gave me was not for me. So I would like to introduce the person you really meant to give a shout out to, and I'm very proud to turn the podium over to Matt McGorry. Matt, of course. <laughs> Just let me finish here, will you? <laughs> Matt is an actor. He's best known for his role in uh, Orange is the New Black, right? <laughs> but he's also an ardent champion of the civil rights of all Americans to what I said was a fundamental civil right, the right to a safe life. So please welcome, uh, give a great Pennsylvania shout out to Matt McGorry.